What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues and no long-term issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, January 17th, 2024. We do have quite a few things for you today on today's show where... We're going to talk about several different news items, then we're going to take a look at some data. There used to be more data on Wednesdays, that has now shifted to Thursdays, but nonetheless, we do have some things to go over. First off, if you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on not just COVID, but any virus that could be a threat to your health. We also talk about celebrity health news, we're going to do some of that today. And if you learn anything at the end of this video, by all means, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. Our first item of the day is has to do with Dayan Miljevic, who is the Golden State Warriors assistant coach, or, well, I should say correctly, was the Golden State Warriors assistant head coach. Unfortunately, he passed away at 46 years old. I am seeing reports from ESPN that he was at dinner in Salt Lake City, had to be rushed to the hospital, and he died. Now, I'm not hearing if he had a heart attack. Some are saying maybe he had a heart attack. It's very sketchy. It's early in the ball game, but what we do know is he has passed away at just 46 years old, which is really young for someone to die. Next, we do have news from the Emmy Awards. Like we have been seeing the past couple of years during these award ceremonies, people are testing positive for COVID. Melanie Linsky was forced to miss the Emmys as she tested positive for COVID-19, and she does say, quote, I did have a bit of a cry. I guess she was sad about it. I mean, not surprising considering how many cases a day there are. There's, we're still doing over a million cases a day in the United States right now. Yes, that is a lot of cases. All right, University of Vermont is asking their employees to mask up again as cases of COVID and other respiratory illnesses in Vermont are high. They currently, in the state of Vermont, have 59 people in the hospital. Now, that is lower than previous years, but hey, an increase is an increase. So, increase is enough between COVID, that's just COVID hospital, and other viruses that, hey, it's time to mask up again up in Vermont. All right, more basketball news. St. John's coach Rick Pitino out for game versus Seton Hall due to COVID-19. Apparently, he tested positive for COVID over the weekend. This game was yesterday. He had to missed yesterday's game because he had COVID. And he does say that he is continuing to recover at this time. So we'll see what happens with that one. And I do believe I already did archive this, you know, on my site, datareport.info. We will get the other one, the celebrity uh, COVID case. And continuing on now, doctors say, we're not in the clear from COVID flu RSV surge. Well, that headline is correct. You want to be in the clear. Let me explain why. Because when you come to the back side of a surge, so you know how the front part of the surge, we're going up, the levels are getting higher and higher. As you're getting closer to that peak, levels get really high. Follow my hand here. But as you're on the back side of the surge, you're falling from really high levels. So in order for us to get down to here, like really low levels, you got to come off the peak. So we're still at the high side of that drop right now, meaning levels are really high and it's really risky for all viruses out there right now. So yes, you could easily still test positive for COVID, flu, RSV, despite us peaking. Don't go out there and think, well, cases have peaked, it's safe now. No, 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 no. Until levels get much, much lower, say a about three weeks or maybe a month from now. It's still extremely risky, and your chance of testing positive for one of these viruses is still very high. So, which is why, hey, we're not in the clear, and guess what? You still need to mask now, and even when levels go lower, you still need to mask. All right, moving on to our next story. This is a story that has been evolving over time. If you're new to my channel, or maybe you haven't watched my updates in a while, or whatever, maybe you're out of the loop, let me catch you up on this. There have been cases of measles popping up in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not the only area. It's the area we're focused on right now. Also, the other areas would be Delaware, which I include in this. Virginia, that gets its own section. And then there's also cases popping up out 
in the UK as well. And who knows, there could be other cases that will pop up in the United States. But back in December of 2023, there were multiple exposures and confirmed cases of measles in the Philadelphia metro area. This includes southeast Pennsylvania, northern Delaware. The first cases were at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Cases were then reported from a daycare center in northeast Philadelphia, which happens to be where I live. I live in northeast Philadelphia. The CDC says measles can have a 10-12 to 12 day incubation period. Rashes can take up to 21 days to occur. This is an evolving situation. I update this thread as more news comes out. Well, on multiple occasions, more news did come out. Delaware's measles exposure occurred at Nemours Children's Hospital on Friday, December 29th between 6 a.m. and 12 p.m. Contact racing shows that between 20 and 30 people have been exposed. So I suspect there may be something that comes out of that. Then there was a case that was confirmed in Canton, New Jersey just last week. Officials know that the infected person went to Cooper University Healthcare Pediatrics in Voorhees on January 5th between 11.35 a.m. and 2.32 p.m. and the emergency department at Jefferson South Jersey Stratford Hospital on Laurel Road on January 8th between 8 p.m. and 12.38 a.m. And then we come to this. Just yesterday, the city of Philadelphia confirmed an additional case of measles on Tuesday, January 16th. I should say January 16th in there. I will correct that later. The health department says eight of these cases are in Philadelphia. Why? One is outside the city. The case is associated with the daycare outbreak and is the fifth case from it. So this is now the fifth case from that daycare. And remember, Delaware and Candom, New Jersey as well. So in light of what's going on with measles, we're going to stick with my website here for a minute. I did make a new section. I had it before in virus outbreaks. I said, you know what? Let's start a section for measles, and there's already four threats. One that goes way back to December 2022 that I found that I did on an outbreak in India. But then we come to Virginia, where there's now a measles outbreak. And, of course, the story that we shared just a couple days ago on UK as well. Not going to share the Virginia outbreak today. I have to do some more research on that, and I have a feeling I'm going to be adding more to that so maybe tonight i will update that and i'll make some corrections to the philadelphia outbreak yeah th unfortunately the site gets another section this time being measles and i'm sure it's not gonna as time goes on it's not gonna stop there we're gonna have more sections coming it's good to document and archive this stuff because 10 years from now we might want to say can we go back and take a look at that yeah, you can on datareport.info. All right, moving on to one more thing. Yes, this was the uh, Virginia. I'll just real briefly mention Virginia officials warned of two of measles exposures at two international airports. It's the airports in the D.C. area. All right, taking a look at today's air quality values, and what you will see here is that it's not terrible. You can see in the southeast it's not bad. Pretty bad in the northeast right now, along the I-95 corridor from Boston down to Philadelphia. Not certain what that's all about. Again, it is fireplace season. It's really cold out, so, you know, furnaces are running and heaters are running at full force. And look at the west coast. Yes, fireplace season is in full force. Just a little bit of concerning air quality in the Midwest, Great Lakes. Not terrible. Of course, we saw a lot worse last summer during the wildfire season. All right, let's take a look at a few of those wastewater sites. And let me refresh this to make sure it is up to date because I have not refreshed it in a while. And let's just take a look at a couple of these wastewater scan sites. Uh, let's take a look at Memphis, Tennessee. That's sticking out to me. Let's see what is going on there at this time. And we see in Memphis, COVID at this time, it was dropping. Now, all suddenly, it has risen a little bit again. Same with our SV. That has rose a little bit again as well. Influenza has not dropped yet. That is still rising. HMPV is not an issue. Norovirus was dropping. Most recent update. Like, as we saw with COVID and RSV, it has risen a little bit again. Some hepatitis A detections back at the end of last year. And at this time, there are no detections of MPOX. All right, continuing on. Let's take a look at another wastewater site. How about we go to your next-door neighbor? How about we go and see what is going on in Arkansas? Arkansas has high COVID levels, but they're dropping at this time. Same with RSV. It's high, but dropping. Influenza B is dropping at this time. HMPV is not an issue. Wow. Wow, this is really a concern. Look at norovirus. 
Norovirus has absolutely exploded in Arkansas, and it is, what's the population? This is Harrison, Arkansas. It's a very small wastewater site. It's only 15,000 population, but wow, check this out. If you have a relative that's in a nursing home or anyone anywhere, please, you got to be using Lysol. you got to be sanitizing surfaces you, in schools, daycares, nursing homes, anywhere, restaurants. Uh, this is a really concerning level of norovirus. Look at the number of pathogens here. It is almost over. No, it is. It's over 200,000. That's one of the highest levels for norovirus I've ever seen. And for such a small uh, wastewater facility, that is extremely concerning. No hepatitis A and no mpox. And I want to show you something else here. That is the only wastewater site on here for Arkansas. Or at least one, the only one that has all of the different viruses. And wow, yeah, if you're in that portion of Arkansas, please be extremely careful because norovirus can be extremely contagious. Alrighty. That's enough of the wastewater sites for today. We're just doing two today because that really uh, sticks out. We want to take a look at what's going on with Walgreens. 27.5% positivity around the country. And we can actually uh, change this to current view. And let's see, which states have the highest? Well, Alaska's coming in at 55.6% positivity. Just only 36 tests. That's, that's nowhere near enough tests. New York State is at 46.7% positivity, and then when we come over to Vermont, it's at 42.9%. Let's take a look at some of the other CDC data, shall we? I'm going to refresh this to make sure it is up to date, and anywhere you see yellow and orange, those are where deaths are increasing at this time. Deaths are increasing, increasing in Oklahoma. Arkansas comes in once again, as does Mississippi, as does Missouri, Iowa, Minnesota. Wisconsin, and you're seeing a bit of a faster increase in Kentucky, you're seeing an increase in Pennsylvania, Virginia, North Carolina, New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Maine. You are seeing increases in a lot of states right now for deaths, and you're also seeing increases in these green areas, as, or at least some of these green areas where they are going up at this time, like Texas. I wanted to show you a Texas update today, but I keep hitting refresh. I guess their new day is now going to be on Thursday, so we'll see. We'll go along here. We will refresh uh, the Texas page at the end of this video. You can see epidemic status for COVID. It's still growing in some areas. Same thing with flu, but it is starting to drop in some areas. Pennsylvania is one of them. California, it's declining a bit faster. Taking a look now at the uh, hospital data, 35,801 people are in the hospital or have been admitted to the hospital on the most recent update. And we do know that the JN.1 variant is the variant that is dominating. We should get an update on its status on Friday. I don't have that tab up for you today. I will have it up for you, hopefully, on Friday's update. I think Friday will be an at-home update. It's not going to be an out in the wild. It's going to be another snow day here. I'm actually excited. I like snow. All right, taking a look at this. This is the EMS calls for yesterday. And there's one thing. This is in Philadelphia. And there's one thing that sticks out to you. Whoa, 883 EMS calls. Yes, that's a high number, but don't run off thinking, oh, it could be because of respiratory. Some of the calls can be. You have to understand something. If you were watching yesterday's pandemic update, you saw the burbs. There were a lot of injuries and fall calls at the time of the update. We had snow and ice. Take a look at this picture of this uh, scene where the fire department was. Look at these streets here. It's very slippery. So the chances are there were a lot of people that had slips, falls, you know, broken bones. That causes a lot of calls for ambulances. Just like in the summertime, you have uh, respiratory calls for respiratory distress when it's hot out or dehydration. The same type of stuff can happen in the wintertime as well can hypothermia frostbite so all kinds of winter calls are likely a reason why it was so high yesterday but hey let's not forget about respiratory illnesses they likely are up as well and taking a look at what's going on here live looking at Montgomery County you can see subject in pain 
head injuries, yeah, falls, fractures, that type of stuff. It's up right now. It's still icy out there. So these type of calls are going to be up. And wow, take a look at Chester County, Pennsylvania. Just a whole bunch of everything going on right now. But again, injured person falls, that lift assist, that seems to be the cream of the crop. But hey, there's also sick calls, heart problems, respiratory difficulty, all things that, you know, could potentially be COVID related, at least for the respiratory difficult and sick person, and maybe even long COVID related. All right, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. You can see here, yes, it's fairly busy there right now as well. All right, I have to refresh this for New Jersey. New Jersey did update today, and believe it or not, the majority of the hospitals reported, almost all of them, 68 out of 70, 1,314 hospitalizations, 53 people on a ventilator in the ICU today. It's 181, and discharge volume is at 204. So that's good to see. All right, moving on now to state of new york where there is i believe it's yeah 2572 new cases and if we zoom in this chart we don't do this very often but in this case we probably should i want to stress something here new york state is dropping right now and they are steadily dropping they're actually dropping almost faster than they were when the rate wave was rising so this is a good thing to see i wouldn't be surprised if come some point in february we see a few days where there are reporting under a thousand cases a day now we know that's uh underreported big time but hey that's something we have to watch hospitalizations as can sometimes be the case when they start a new week end up higher than they left off on the prior week that doesn't mean they're going to start rising again they will probably drop again tomorrow or the day after but they did rise ever so slightly they ended last week 3049 they rose slightly to 3087 all right drum roll please let's see if texas came in with their update as of the time i started recording this no and no i just refreshed it no texas update so i guess texas will now update on thursdays and we also should be getting an update out of Ohio tomorrow. It's not always easy for me to find Ohio. I have to rely on news sources. The website I used to use, it moved, and it's some data log. I don't know. So hopefully we will get something out of Ohio tomorrow as well. And one of these days, I'm going to search all 50 states and see which states actually still have a dashboard. And maybe we'll expand on the states that we currently report on. We will have a lot more states tomorrow. That does it for today's pandemic update. Boy, that was a lot of news and information, wasn't it? How about that norovirus that was ongoing in Arkansas? Ooh, that is uh, relatively concerning that there is so much norovirus ongoing at just a wastewater facility that's only 15,000 population. Again, if you live in that area, please sanitize your services, especially if you are a business owner. It could easily be spreading in that area. Wish we had more wastewater sites surra in surrounding towns and counties there just to see if that's just a localized thing maybe it's a glitch i don't think it's a glitch it was rapidly going up Alrighty, folks if you learned anything give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more content like this subscribe to my channel down below and of course if you know anyone that needs to see this maybe i know someone where that norovirus is uh, ongoing by all means alert them of this share them of this tell them hey i just saw data reports pandemic update things are still pretty bad out there you really need to see this you really need to know what's going on maybe uh, you want to share it with your child's daycare or local health system and maybe it will help them make a better decision on you know bringing these back mask by all means do that if you have anything to say say it in the comments section down below i love to read your comments i will see you all again tomorrow for another edition of the pandemic update hope you enjoyed today's show thanks for watching and stay safe everyone